Okay, we are back here on the Trading Post, and we are joined by Brett and Shaw from Caldwell Banker. How are you guys doing? Oh, good morning, East Texas. It's another beautiful day here at Cedar Creek Lake, and we're doing great. Busy, busy yet again this week. Uh, I tell you what, it's a good time to be in real estate. If you're a realtor, developer, just a person looking to sell or buy, maybe a, uh, even lenders and surveyors and everybody just associated with real estate, it is a busy time here at the lake. It is busy, busy. And I tell you what, if you want to get into the real estate industry right now, um, there's lots of different options on it, not just being you know your normal day in, day out real estate agent, realtor, but uh, one of the things we're seeing right now is uh, appraisers, appraisers and surveyors. If you're looking for a career option, they are backed up. And so if you want, if you want a, a career path um, that has a lot of business going on right now, appraiser and surveyor. Look at getting into appraising and surveying what it takes to get into that and um, you can find yourself a good a good place to work. It's pretty decent money too. Yeah, not too sh not too shabby. Not but too shabby. yeah, if if you're looking to get your property on the market, whether you've got a home, waterfront, regular <laughs> residential, uh, some lots or acreage like we're going to talk about today, it is an excellent time. I'm not just getting calls from the Metroplex like we usually get. I'm not sure how many calls I have received from other states over the last few months. People are moving to Texas in droves and it's going to continue with all the business coming here. We just found out, I believe it was yesterday morning, the official announcement, Tesla is coming here with their truck production. So big, it's not just mom and pop businesses, big businesses are moving to Texas and workers are moving with them and what they need is a place to live. Yeah, we saw what happened in the Frisco McKinney area the last couple of years with the Toyota plant coming in. Um, we're probably going to see the same thing happen with the Tesla plant coming in. And if that goes over really well, I'm sure Tesla is going to be bringing even more of their production into Texas. So it's not going to be just this one plant. This is the beginning of a large movement for them here. Because you also got to think, not just building the, the Tesla plant here, but what else is Musk involved with? Space. SpaceX. Yeah. And what is in Texas? NASA. NASA, the Houston Space Center. So if he starts bringing uh, Tesla here and then starts bringing SpaceX here, coordinating with NASA in Houston, um, that's a lot of jobs, that's a lot of business, that's a lot of good for Texas. Yeah, that's really good for the state. And so, yeah, can uh, I ask you guys one quick question? Yeah. Okay, they're opening this plant in San Antonio, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's just outside of Austin. Okay, how far away is that from where we're at right now? Uh, Austin is right at about four and a half hours from mm -hmm. here. See, so I could see somebody out there working for Tesla, an engineer or something, mm -hmm. wanting to have a weekend home here in Gun Barrel because they're only four hours. Oh, of away. course. The, just this year, I've had three couples looking at property here at Cedar Creek Lake from Austin. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it is a, a retreat from all over the state. And in fact, you know, back years ago when I used to do construction and stuff, we had clients that would come from Minnesota to here to have a lake house, which I always found odd that they're from the land of 10,000 lakes, but would come to our great lake here. Mm -hmm. But apparently ours was just that good. Ours is just that good. Ours is better. So. Yeah. Plus, if you're one of those people that likes to fry out there in the August heat, you don't do that so much on those Minnesota lakes. You do that here. No, no more of a frostbite. Than more of a frostbite. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing. Here during the winter, um, we get a few, we get a few uh, icy days and snowy days, things like that, but it's not like up north. You can still enjoy the lake, especially if you're a fisherman or just like to get out in the boat. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's somebody that likes to water ski in January. Oh, I've seen even on the coldest days, people just put on their uh, wetsuits mm -hmm. and they're out there sea doing and skiing and all sorts of things. Because I mean, it really you get like what, maybe 15, 20 really cold days in Texas. Yeah, I mean, yeah. of cold days. And, and usually it's less than a handful of ones that we actually have to worry about needing to bring our pets and plants in and stuff like that. It's great weather here all year round. Which is why so many people are moving down here. Everybody's moving to Texas these days. Yeah. And if you're wanting to move to Texas, um, there's there's a lot of options. That's one of the great things about being out here in East Texas. There's lots of different options on um, how you want to live and what you want to do, 
whether you're a, a lake person, a city person, a farm person, there's lots of options. And today, Brett, you're talking about farm and ranch properties and a little bit uh, about hunting season coming up, correct? Yeah, and the thing with the acreage is we have two big things this time of year with our acreage. First, like we've been talking a lot about the development, people mm -hmm. are looking for the acreage to split up in the home tracks because we don't have enough. And the second is uh, hunting properties. Yeah. This is a good time of year, these fall hunting sports that people are involved in, these are the time of year that people get out and put out maybe their game feeders mm -hmm. or cameras to just monitor what kind of wildlife is going across their property. And, and getting set up with uh, blinds and stands and hunting trails cleared and everything that you need to do for the hunting season coming up, uh, now is the time to get that piece of property. Yeah, because if you, um, if you wait till the general season, starts about November 5th or so, to start looking and get a piece of property under contract, then you're gonna close on that thing just in time for the season to close. Now's the time to be out shopping for that property, get it under contract, get it closed, and then you'll have it in your name right in time even for the beginning of dove season at the beginning of September. Um, and then you'll have the archery season starts at the beginning of October and then general season um, November and then you have some muzzle loaders and some turkey seasons and youth seasons things like that that are in the January February uh, time but if you're wanting to get a good hunting property now's the time to start looking get it under contract because you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna shop you're gonna wanna get your lending together then you're gonna wanna get it under contract then you gotta go through the title process and like we were saying uh, surveyors right now uh, they're booked up, so it may take an extra week or two to get that surveyor out there. And then once you get it, like Brett's saying, you probably want to do a little care for your game out there. You want to put out some feeders, a little scent, maybe do a little dirt work on the property, um, set up your blinds, things like that. And so that takes a couple of days, and you want to get that into the works before the opening of the season. Yeah, and another thing for me, you know, I budget everything. That's My wife's got some pretty strict budget mm -hmm. where we account every dollar. One thing people don't think about sometimes is the cost of hunting leases. If you've ever tried to go purchase a lease for the year, if, if it's something that you're just doing one time, this is our season that we're going to try this out, I would just like buying a property. I would just, uh, suggest do it the one year, see if you like it, see if it's something you'd want to do. But if you know you're a hunter that would like a place to hunt for the next five, ten years, mm -hmm. look at the price of those leases versus purchasing your own property these days yeah because when you're when you're leasing a property you're you're essentially buying that property for the landowner plus giving them profit mm -hmm. uh, because you have to cover whatever their note would be and their insurances and their upkeep and their maintenance plus make them some extra profit for their time so why not if this is the thing that you do go find that piece of property and you just purchase the property, um, in which case you're also uh, less restricted because a lot of the leases out there, um, you know, you go back in the area, um, back in the 80s and 90s even, um, and a lot of the leases, you, you leased it and you just did what you did. Um, now there's a lot of restrictions. So there's certain times of the year you can come in. You don't just get the full access to the lease, do whatever you want 12 months a year because they may be ranching, farming, things like that. So they don't need you messing up crops, um, messing with cattle, things like that. You are you just have the specific hunting lease and so you have times of ingress and egress. Uh, some of them even put on their stipulations of you can only be on the property like 30 minutes before dark, 30 minutes after dark. Um, there's restrictions on um, where you can put feeders, how you can do feeders, uh, where you can put stands. Um, a lot of them lease it on a uh, per gun basis and so you register the particular um, hunting accessory with the landowner and so they know that that piece comes there with you and it's extra for each family member, friend that comes and you may or may not be able to get them on there and there may be other people that are leasing the same property so you have your stand in this area and you're allowed to come in on these days 
and come to that stand and sit in that stand. You're not, you can't just go wander the property just because you like wandering the property today like it's a giant park. So buying the property, all of that to say, buying the property opens up your options. It's then your property. Mm -hmm. Put your stand where you want, put your feeder where you want, come in, go out when you want, bring whatever friends you want over. Um, now, words on safety. You need to be able to, you need to know how your tools of the trade work. So you need to be sure that what whatever you're doing, whatever you're hunting, that everything you maintain safety and control. And so that's part also of the benefit of owning the land. You're out there all year long and you can see how you, you learn your land. And so you control your implements and you keep people safe. You know how fields of fire, lanes of fire, uh, directions, terrain, you know, valleys, hills, things like that mm -hmm. for, for capturing that. So you keep everybody safe with it. I like yeah. that. Yeah. And that. And that protects, it, like you said, making it your own. Because if you're having to lease from somebody, just like mom over there with her land, some people like her, they don't care anything for the hunting. They would like to just go out and enjoy and view. Mm -hmm. And you have to coordinate with when the owner and the leasee would be on the property. Mm -hmm. Just another good reason to purchase right now. Yeah, we go over there um, during hunting season. Um, I guess it's called heavily armed napping, I guess yeah. is what it's <laughs> what it's called. Because we go over there and um, we usually just sit in the truck and eat Cheetos and just watch the deer and maybe take a picture with the cell phone. Yeah, that's, use that's a, a high powered <laughs> deer watcher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they're, they're like an extra family member with the amount of corn we feed them between, mm -hmm. between the deer and the pigs. And so uh, we like them. They're really, for us, they're really just, uh, they're really just big wild pets. Mm -hmm. And so we like having them come across there. We like watching them, uh, taking pictures of them, uh, just sitting in the car, just seeing what they do. A lot easier just to look at them than to have to take one home with you. Yeah. Yeah. So it takes uh, a lot less time. Yeah. So you've got some great property options for us here, Brett. Yeah. The uh, first one I want to start off with is over here in Eustace. This one's located on Char Charlotte Trail, which is in the Lake Oaks subdivision. Mm -hmm. This is outside of the city limits. Mm -hmm. And what you've got here is 10.18 acres. Mm -hmm. And not only is it 10 acres, it's, it's situated on a corner. So you've got actually, well, it's there's two roads on the corner, but there's a third unpaved road that goes across the back of it as well. So lots of good access to the property. Mm -hmm. Then situated against the road, it is already platted into 17 lots mm -hmm. with the extra acreage back behind it there. So this could be good for a developer or for a hunter, like mm -hmm. we were talking about. And although it's listed not technically as waterfront, Cedar Creek Lake turns into a channel, which becomes a creek, which flows right through the center of this property. So technically you are on Cedar Creek Lake on this property. Now I would suggest talking to Tarrant County if you were looking to do something like maybe putting in a boathouse, retaining walls, things like that, of which they're very uh, easy to deal with over here at Tarrant County. Yeah. If you lay out your plans, they're gonna work with you on that. But that may be a good option for somebody been looking to develop. It may be a good option with these 17 lots if somebody's looking for a development of building. But like we were just talking about, this could be a good option just for wildlife viewing yeah. as well. With 10 acres, with, with a creek coming right through the middle, Lots of wildlife going to be attracted to this area here. Yeah, lots of wildlife. Uh, great, great wildlife viewing area. Um, you know, since we were mentioned, this has part of it that's subdivision. This is also a thing with the safety and everything. Um, with the sports, sports out there, the fall sports, I like to call them. Um, one thing you have to look at if you've got pieces that are part of a subdivision or bump up to a subdivision, um, you need to be sure you check on how you can go about hunting if you need to check if it's allowed there and two some places um, like subdivisions there are occasional subdivisions usually the older ones that do allow for hunting but restrict it to like archery um, some places um, like if you're near bodies of water hunting ducks things like that or even hunting other animals if you're close to certain um, impoundments of water require steel shot versus lead shot so once again, just want to put that public service notice mm -hmm. out there about that. But this is a great wildlife viewing property. Yeah, and a great property, over 10 acres, <clears throat> 75,000. Mm -hmm. That's about the cheapest per acre property I've seen 
in our area here recently. Yeah, that's a great price for, what'd you say, 10.18 .18 acres? 10.18 acres. That makes it less than 7,500 an acre, which most properties we've noticed have jumped up to around the 10,000 an acre recently mm -hmm. over the past year or so. So that's a good deal today. Call the office if this is one that you're interested in. Yeah, give them a call today. What's your next property? Next one is over in Kearns. This is on County Road 4080, and you've got 95 acres there. Big open land. Not as much trees on this property. Mm -hmm. More of a flat open space, but it's 95 acres. Yeah, so that's between Trinidad and Kearns if you're on 31, mm -hmm. and then you go south on Farm to Market Road 3096, and then about where you're in the community of Samaria, you head south on that County Road 4080, and it's a big open rectangle with a few trees on it, and then it has a big tree line on the south, the property to the south of it. It's very heavily wooded. So that's a great sportsman property out there. Yeah, for only 212000 I told you that that other one was on the cheap end for yeah. acreage. This is definitely, I don't think you can find anything for this price for this acreage out there right now. Yeah, $2,500 an acre uh, for that kind of acreage. Really, I mean, you've got to go out to West Texas to get that kind of that kind of price on an acre. And even that West Texas property is going up because a lot of people from all over the country are starting to find out about it and its price and are buying up um, retreat places out there. Yeah, our, our office just sold, I'm not sure how many thousands of acres about two years ago yeah. out there. They put together a, a giant ranch yeah. and into one package out there. So it's not even available in West Texas to find acreage these days as yeah. easily. The big acreage, you have to start piecing it back together. And so pieces like this are being they're constantly being split up, split up, split up. So if you're wanting a piece like this, it's it's important to get it now because in years to come, they're getting rarer and rarer with each year they're being split up into more developments. Mm -hmm. So uh, real quick, you got a couple more properties. Yeah, here, right? a couple more. Uh, one of them, another one just east of Eustace here at 12407 Highway 175. Okay. This is right off of the south side of Highway 175, 6.32 acres for only 65,000. Great wooded area, has a pond on it, backs right up to the railroad tracks. We have personally seen wildlife on this one. Mm -hmm. Not too big, but it's got enough room to kind of push your neighbors just a little bit farther over to the side. Great property for only 65,000 today. And beautiful trees, I mm -hmm. tell you, beautiful trees, nice rolling hills in through there, beautiful shared pond. That's a great one to look at if you're looking for a nice little small manageable piece of acreage for only 65,000, that's one to check out this weekend. Right, and I got one last one real quick, just here, Highway 198, south of, uh, it's in Paint Springs area there, 28.34 okay. acres with a gated entry, a paved road right through the center, partially wooded, partially open fields, and a pond for only 250,000 today. Wow. That's less than 10,000 an acre on that one as well. So less than 10,000 an acre and very well put together and developed already. Yeah, great piece of property. Though. Great piece of property. So if you're looking to get your property on the market or you want to see one of these beautiful properties this weekend, you can give our office a call, 903-887-7055, right in the heart of Gun Barrel City, 600 West Main in Gun Barrel City, right next to the First Baptist Church Gun Barrel and across the street. Uh, from O'Reilly Auto Parts there, big blue and white building, stop in seven days a week, or they can give you a call, Brett, what's your phone number? 903-340-6301. And they can get you on Facebook too. Yeah, just type in Brett Killian, Cobalt Banker, American Dream Realty, we're selling the American Dream. Awesome, and I'm Shy at 903-340-6159, or just start typing in Shy Ben Realtor, Cobalt Banker, American Dream Realty on Facebook, and you'll find me there. And Contact me about one of these properties. Contact Brett. Give our office a call. And then uh, if y'all want to leave that paper, if anyone yeah. wants to hear more about it, just give us a call here at the Trading Post, and I can let y'all know. And those are some good, good lands right there. Some good lots available. And something I wanted to touch on real quick, that would be a good investment, too, to lease yeah. out to somebody. We were talking about that last year. Yeah, that yeah. is not. <laughs> so Become that landlord that gets the money off the lease and pays for your land. And then makes a little bit of money, extra, a little bit extra too. So. Yes, sir. Yeah, you've, you've got the right idea. See, uh, other people have been paying for years where you pay for that owner's note and their insurance and their upkeep and their maintenance and their profit. You can be the one that collects that from them too. So here we go. We got, what is it, four properties there? Yeah, we, we've got many more. We just, we only have time for so many every week. 
uh, th these are going quick. We probably won't have these next time we're here. So but when are you going to be here? Two weeks? Two weeks. Stone will be back with you next week. Okay. And then we'll be back here in a couple weeks, I suppose. Yeah. Well, thank y'all, Caldwell Banker. We'll see y'all in a couple weeks, and we'll see Stone uh, next week. So we're going to hop into a commercial, and we will be right back. Perfect.